But now that won't happen with you because you can stand in authority because God lives in you. So you can say, in the authority of Christ, that is in me as a child of God, you must bow your knee and be destroyed. When you really understand that, you can stand in authority and nothing can come against you because how dare it come against you? They should bow to the prince and the princess. That's the sort of stuff you've got to get, but without pride, humbly before God. Understand who you are. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. That's a few things or anything. Anything. So what are you looking for? What are you, what are you searching for in life? What, what are you requiring in life? It's got to come through the name of Christ, which means it's got to come through his authority, but also the will of God, through the will of the Father, through Christ. So when you say it's in my name, that means what I would want to do. What my will is, if you do it in my name, it will be done because my will be the same with your will and then it will happen. That's how it works. That's the process of God's order. John chapter 5, verse 19. It says this. Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. How much can he do? Nothing. He can only do what his father's doing, sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son does also. Any sons or daughters in the house? If there's sons and daughters in the house, what should we be doing? What we see the father doing. What we see Jesus doing. What the spirit of God tells us and teaches us. Hello. Then you'll be effective in your Christian walk. John chapter 14, verses 30 to 31. He says this, I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, this devil. But the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me to do. So come now, let us leave. So he's saying here that this, this prince of this world, the, the devil is coming And he's going to try to take me out. But you know what? He's got no hold over me because I know who I am, right? But he says, but let's go because I'm going to do the Father's will because the Father said, will you go to the cross? And he says, I will go. So he submitted his life and said, not my will, but yours. I could take this character out in a snuff of the nose, but I won't do it because the Father asked me not to, but to go to the cross. And that's the same as us. When we're in life out there, sometimes we could just snuff someone out, right? But we've got to know what the Father's will is because what will happen is that you're writing checks out you cannot cash. It's not right. But if it's got the Father's will behind it, there will be power in your life. And it'll be about love. It'll be about blessing. It'll be about mercy. It'll be about grace and things like that, which you were given, freely given, freely give. Getting something. Jesus was in the garden, Mark chapter 14, verse 36. I want to show you some verses so you know that I'm not making this stuff up. He says, Abba, Father, he said. That's Daddy, Dad, the most intimate you could get. Dad, Daddy. He said, everything is possible for you. So he knew. Did he know? Everything is possible. He was making a statement there. Everything's possible. Do you believe that everything is possible for God? If you believe that, you should pray, God, I know everything's possible for you. Lord, I'm wanting for this job. And I know that everything is possible for you. But do you know what, Father? I never want to go out of your will. So I want your will to be done in this situation. I want your spirit of God to speak me through this situation so he can direct me and guide me and show me your way. That's the prayer you've got to pray. Everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. So he's, he's singing out. He's desperate. Take this cup from me. Let God know your problems. Oh, God, I know you can do everything. I can't handle these. These bills are getting too big for me. Lord, take them away. Smite that person who does that to me. But yet not my will, but yours. You're being real, but you're being submitted. God says, I can feel your pain, I know your problems, but you're submitted to me. 
We must follow the same principle if we're going to find success in your life. We must find God's will for your circumstances. In all situations of life, not just healing, but in direction and guidance, we learn in John chapter 15 and John chapter 16. I want you to go home this week and get out John chapter 15, John chapter 16. He comes as the, the convictor and he comes as the, as the saviour. The Holy Spirit comes. And it comes through the Holy Spirit, it teaches there, that teaches us all truth that comes from the throne room of God. Do you want to know the will of God? Get to know the Holy Spirit. Get to know his pressions in your mind in, and, and the thoughts that come in and see if they line up with the character of God. Understand and get to know him and say, now does that impression or does that thought line up with the character of God? Would God want me to go and smite him or love him? Mm, I don't know. Maybe I should forgive him. I really want to just beat him. Is that God? No, I better get and love him. Right? And you go the way that God wants you to go. John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. I'll give you a little bit. It says, but when he... Now look at that. Did he say when it? No. He says when he. So he is a person. There's a person of the Holy Spirit. We're not one of those religions out there that say he's just an... A, a, an it or a force. He's not a force, he's a he. He is a person. You can speak to the Holy Spirit as a person. It's not blaspheming God because he is God. And when you speak to the Holy Spirit, what does he do? He gives all glory to the Father and Christ because they're one. So you've got to understand he's a person. He will guide you in all truth, he will not speak on his own. He will, do you think he's trying to say something here? He will speak only what he hears. So he won't speak on his own. He'll only speak from what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. Do you want to know what's in store for you? He can tell you. But he won't speak on his own behalf. He will reveal what the Father reveals for him to tell you. Are you getting this stuff? Matthew 28, verse 19. I'm going to finish with these couple of verses. Then we're going to have communion. Matthew 28, 19, he says, Therefore, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Now listen to this. In the name, which is the name is authority, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. So what he's saying here is that you go in my authority, in my will, and in my power. That's how you're going to go out there and win disciples. In his will, Father's will, in his name, in Christ's name, in his authority, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The process of order is one. You can't miss one out, guys. And too many times we try to miss one out and then we find we don't receive. That's the process of God's order. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting, this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. And then he says, you know, in Matthew, that account that we talked about earlier. So we need to get ourselves into a place that we are continually in in a prayer state. When you're driving down the road, when you're talking, when you're walking, you know you could talk to people and you can be listening to the Spirit of God at the same time. And so when you get used to that and tuned to that, you can go around and you can just listen. And you can feel and you can understand. It's a, it's a whole new dimension. It's a whole new lot of fun to do. Because right. it brings a whole new dimension to your Christianity instead of just the natural. This week... I want to encourage you just to pick up your Bible. Maybe dust some of the dust off. Find where it is, maybe. Take it out of the boot of your car or on the back seat on the floor and read it. 
oh, I use my iPad or my iPhone to read. That's good, but do you know what? I'll never give this up. Because when you open the pages and you're going through slowly, God sometimes just brings something out and you just want to highlight something or scribble something down. And it's so different, right? And so I would say, read your word this week. Ask the Lord, what's he saying in your situation? Go through the process that God's put you through. Take some time out for prayer. How's your prayer life lately? Truly, do a self-examination. When was the last time you really just got aside from God, closed the door from everyone, and just said, Father, this is your time. I just want to love on you. I want to just tell you how much I appreciate you. When was the last time you just took that time? It's time to do it again, guys. The time is short. We're at the end of the race. We need to push in. There's godly order through Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, through the Father's will. Amen?